Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rebecca Keppel. Today's video is stuffed to the brim with stitching on cards, tips, tricks, techniques, the whole shebang. I can already feel everybody dividing into two camps. There's the camp that says, I already stitch on cards, I know what I'm doing, and I have the products I need. Then there's the other camp that says, I never stitch on cards, it seems like it takes way too long, I don't have the products that I need. This video is for both camps, I promise. I am super excited to be a part of the Waffle Flower blog hop that is happening right now. They are releasing their August 2020 Stitchables release. It is just jammed full of the most amazing dies. So for those of you who love stitching on cards, you have to continue watching all the way through to see so many truly innovative products. That is why I love Waffle Flower. For those of you who are intimidated by stitching on cards or who think you don't have the time, this video is for you too. As you know, Waffle Flower is one of my favorite small card making businesses and I will link to my support small card making business series down in the YouTube description box below. But for now, let's just jump right in. Take a look at this amazing Stitchables release and get started on some fun and easy stitching techniques. There are four bundles this month, the Stitchables Essentials Bundle, the Stitchable Pinking Shapes Bundle, the Stitchable Borders Bundle, and the Stitchable Holiday Bundle. Of course, you can purchase any of the dies individually as well. The bundles do save you a bit of extra money though, and you can see some of the samples that I made this month with all of these fun dies. The first die I want to show you is amazing. It's called the A2 piercing panel die. You simply lay your stitchable die cut on top and rub with your finger and the little bumps pop out the little circles. You don't even need to line anything up. You just clear off whatever dots you've already poked out and replace your die cut and continue rubbing until all the little dots pop out. For this first stitch, I'm using the hearts border die upside down. I line up the sides of the die with the cardstock and then temporarily adhere it with purple tape and run it through my die cut machine, being sure to use a metal shim because that really helps you get a clean cut. I'm doing a traditional cross stitch, so I start from the back and at the bottom hole on the left hand side, I tape off the end of the string so it doesn't come out and then I do an entire row of diagonal stitches. Once that row is done, I stitch diagonally in the other direction, creating an entire row of tiny X's. I finish this with two more rows of cross stitches in different blues to create the look of waves. So by doing some simpler stitches, you can really carve off a lot of time that it takes to finish a project. Let me show you what I mean. This time I'm using the border from the stitchable squares die. Let me show you a cool thing about these border dies. If you're using them horizontally, you simply line them up with the edge of your horizontal A2 paper. But if you want a vertical orientation, there are these notches that show you where to line up the die on the edge of the paper. For this panel, I'm starting at the back on the second row of dots. Then I stitch diagonally down the whole row, only this time, I'm not going to come back and stitch diagonally the other way to create the X's. Instead, I'll move down to the next row, making sure to make my diagonals in the same direction and continue until I have four rows of diagonal stitches, which is much faster than a traditional full cross stitch. Another way to speed up your stitching time is to do a back stitch. Start at the back, and when you're on the front, stitch forward once. Once you're on the back again, stitch forward once. Now on the front, you stitch backwards, and you continue doing this to create an entire border all the way around the square. If you find embroidery thread too thick, try crochet thread, which only has three strands. Okay, so I am doing an up and down stitch instead of going sideways or straight stitch or diagonally, I'm just going to stitch from top to bottom here. And then once that's done, I'm going to create little hearts by creating two little diagonal stitches next to each other 
in different directions. So I go diagonally to the right and then I come back at the top left and come back down to the pointed heart in the center there and just create a tiny little heart on your stitched background. A fun way to speed up stitching is to create extra large stitches that end up looking like string art. Start stitching towards the front from the back at one end and then skip all the holes in between and stitch towards the back at the other end. I especially like how this looks with several colors of string. To make a straight stitch go even quicker, try just going straight ahead with each stitch. So never stitch backwards and create these skip spots between the stitches. It looks like in every other stitch. Just a quick reminder that these dies will cut felt. Be sure to use a metal shim for a clean cut. Then you can stitch little patterns on your felt to create a really cute decorated stocking look. But the thing that I love about these dies is that you don't even have to stitch on them at all if you don't want to. They look so beautiful and delicate and I love the pattern of the dots that's created by die cutting them. So next I'm going to share two different ways to use them that don't require any stitching at all. To do no stitching at all, try ink blending on these die cuts to create a pretty colorful doily look. Or simply cut them out of white cardstock and adhere them to your project for an eyelet lace effect. So we covered cross stitches, back stitches, straight stitches, all kinds of stitches, large stitches. We covered ink blending and not even doing anything at all, just die cutting. So now let's throw some cards together with all of these different panels. To complete my cross-stitched card, I popped up the mermaid from mermaid mail combo and stamped the sentiment on one of the message boards dies. I added a seahorse and some white enamel dots for bubbles. For the half cross stitch or diagonal stitch, I trimmed down the panel to four by five and a quarter and matted it on navy cardstock. I adhered the pinked heart die cut as is and stamped a sentiment from the stitched sentiments stamp set, which I then die cut in a circle and popped up on some dimensional adhesive. For the backstitched card, I stitched a rainbow of backstitches around the pinked rectangle and added a stitched sentiment on a message board die and simply popped the whole thing up on an A2 card base. I combined backstitching around the hearts and diagonal stitching inside and then added some under the sea crabs for this clean and simple card. I created even more waves with the every other stitch on this one and used more creatures from the under the sea combo. For my big stitches pinked circle, I popped it up on some waffle flower pattern paper and added a stitched sentiment. To make a pom-pom for the stitchable beanie die, I wrapped the same colored thread that I used for the stitching around my finger and then I used a piece of that same string to tie a knot around the middle. Then you put the tip of your scissors through each loop and cut the loop. Then fluff it up and stitch it to the beanie. I added holiday sentiments and adhered the felt shapes to pattern paper with tape runner. I added the ink blended pink heart to my squares with mini hearts and added a popped up oversized hugs die. Here's the other card where I only used the ink blending on the die. Last but not least, in a favorite crafty supplies video, which I'll link to here, I shared how I organize my thread. And I got a couple of questions about how to put the thread on a bobbin without getting it all jumbled up and knotted. So let me just show you my tip real quick. I die cut the smallest bobbin from the floss bobbins die, which is great because it has a tag hole at one end, so you could keep a bunch of colors on a ring to stitch on the go. Plus, it has a small cut at the end which locks the string into place. So what you don't want to do is just pull the string out of the bundle, because if you do that, you may end up with a knotted mess like I did here. Instead, 
Remove both paper wraps and then open up the string until it looks like a circle. Then start unwinding the string. Take that string that you've unwound and wrap it around your bobbin. Then unwind more thread. This process takes a little bit longer, but you won't end up with that knotted mess, which is almost impossible to get out. So I'd love to know if this video convinced any non-stitchers to try stitching on cards. Please let me know in the comments below, I'd love to hear. If you want to see more card making tips and tricks, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already, and ring that bell so you can be notified anytime I have a new video available. All of these amazing new products are linked down in the YouTube description box below. I want to thank you so much for stopping by and spending time with me, and as always, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. Card snitch. <laughs> well, I don't snitch on cards either because that would be rude. I went backwards. <laughs>